Hello everyone, um, so tonight I'm going to try um, to, in my video to show a little bit more of the cooking and food prep part uh, rather than just the finished product. Um, my friend, a uh, good friend, sent me a video of um, a YouTube um, channel called Bon Appetit and they are making this dish that he said reminded um, him of me. And I think it's because there were a lot of mushrooms in it. I happen to love mushrooms. Um, a lot of people don't like mushrooms because they say it kind of like t either tastes like dirt or it just has like a, a really weird texture to it. Um, the taste, I mean, I think it's just, I really like that earthy flavor and it, and it kind of brings a nice, um, rich layer of flavor to whatever dish you're making. So you either like mushrooms or you don't. I think I kind of converted my friend into liking mushrooms a lot, which is, um, kind of a nice compliment on my behalf. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to use them. The way I cook, I cook what tastes good to me. And, um, and the other thing is, uh, I was looking at the, the recipe that they had online, and um, it looked really, really good. And some of the ingredients I didn't have. Um, and the way I tend to cook is, whatever I have available is what I'll use to, to make the dish. Um, I'm not too picky about getting the each, each particular ingredient um, absolutely identical to whatever recipe I may or may not be following. Uh, what I usually do is I just see a lot of different recipes online or on, on YouTube and I kind of take the parts that I really like um, and go from there. So um, yeah, all my cooking amounts, there's no actual measured amount um, that you have to stick to. Um, I love cooking with my Dutch oven which my sister um, got for me for Christmas because everything's kind of just in one pot and it's really easy to make that way. Um, you don't have to switch around with different um, different pans and pots and make it all messy. Um, so anyway, here we go. Tonight I'm going to make a uh, what I <laughs> frequently make a lot of pasta dish. Um, I'm going to be using this a um, this salad pasta um, that I happen to like a lot. Um, there's going to be mushrooms in it, um, some uh, sausage meatballs, um, and uh, some diced tomatoes, just to add another layer of flavor, um, onions, and garlic. Uh, I tend to use lots of garlic, but tonight I forgot to pick up some garlic, so I only had to—I only had what was left in the fridge, so that's what I'm using. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. So here we go. So I usually like to cut everything um, all at once so that it's all ready to go. Um, I've got these prepackaged um, cloves of garlic and I actually forgot to get garlic from the store today because uh, I thought I had enough. Um, so I didn't actually really forget, I just didn't do it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I usually put more garlic than this, but this is going to have to do. I'm just cutting off the brown ends. Um, then once they're cut off, at least the big ones, you can just use your knife to crush them. There. And then you can just chop them finely. One whole onion. Just gonna cut the ends off. <clears throat> I know that there is a specific way of cutting onions really finely where you keep one end uncut so that it stays together. Um, sometimes I do that if I'm feeling um, technically apt, uh, but this works just fine. There you go. So I got this uh, one pound of country pork meat 
from the store. And um, it's great because it's in like this little ground meat form and you can just use it to make your own little meatballs, which I'm going to do right now. Um, you just basically grab a little bit, roll it into a ball, and you do that for the rest of the pound of meat. What I like about these, um, the sausage meat is that there's already salt added to it, um, so you don't actually have to add too much salt to your actual dish while you're cooking. Um, and this just adds a really nice layer of flavor to your dish. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to saute these in oil first um, so that it de develops a little bit of browning at the bottom of the Dutch oven. And that browning, um, the brown charred layer at the bottom that's left is called fond, and you can use any sort of liquid. Um, I, again, totally forgot to pick up some white wine, which is what I usually use to uh, deglaze the bottom of the, of the, of the pan. Um, so today I'm just going to use a little bit of chicken broth, and that should um, deglaze quite nicely. That fond, that little charred uh, layer at the bottom of the pan that develops when you're cooking um, is where a lot of the flavor is. Uh, so it's um, all that flavor is going to go into your dish. This might seem kind of time consuming and tedious, but actually it's not too bad. Um, it's uh, I usually just put on some music while I'm doing this. And um, right now I don't have any music, but that's okay because I'm already almost halfway done. Yay! Almost done. <clears throat> and there you go. All the sausage meatballs are done. So this is probably the epitome of laziness, um, but I bought the pre-packaged, pre-sliced mushrooms. One of them um, are the shiitake mushrooms, which are really nice, and the other ones are baby bellas. So the shiitake mushrooms are a little bit, um, they're, even though they're already sliced, they're kind of in big um, chunks. So I'm going to cut them a little bit further just so that they're not too big because um, I want them to be able to be easily fit in my mouth. No jokes, please. <laughs> Um, so there's a pile of shiitake mushrooms. I'm just going to do a few easy slices throughout. Or as Ina Garten would say, a rough chop. And that's really what I'm doing, just a really rough chop. I'm not trying to get specific sizes, just smaller sizes. Um, so that should be good. And then these baby bellas, they're already in fairly small sizes, so I'm just going to leave them as is. And, um... And I'm actually probably not going to use them yet until I put them in the, uh, in the, in the pan, so I'm just going to leave them here in this container for now. Okay, so you'll have to bear with me because I'm doing this one-handed, but I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in. Nice layer at the bottom. Maybe a little bit more. You can always use more olive oil, right? Um, I'm going to turn this to fairly medium-low heat, um, and I'm just going to start putting these uh, little meatballs in. Um, even though it's not hot yet in the pan, because it'll get warm, and probably by the time I actually put them in. So I'm going to just try and put them in in one layer, um, so that they're not on top of each other, as much as I can. Okay, there you go. Um, there's a nice little layer of meatballs. And as you can see, um, they're not all uniform, they're not all the same size. That's okay. It's all going to go into your mouth anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, for you cell pathology nerds, you can call it anisomitosis. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was dumb. Anyway, um, so I'm going to let these stew for a little bit. I think what I'll do is I'm going to, well, first I'm going to tilt it a bit so the oil kind of gets to every part of the pan, and then I'm going to cover it and let it simmer for 
um, let it fry for uh, or saute for a, a few minutes and we'll see where it goes. While that's cooking in there, um, one of the things that I like to do, you know, when you cook, you get the cutting board dirty, you get your knives dirty, you get um, little bowls that you hold uncooked things dirty. Um, so th while things like this are cooking, um, I like to actually, uh, a good tip is just to wash your dishes in between um, because it really minimizes on the cleanup that you inevitably have to do afterwards. Um, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. I'm going to see how this looks. Well, that looks really good. Um, it's very important during this time that you don't move the meatballs around. Um, you want it to actually let it sit there and develop that brown charred bottom. Um, and uh, it has a little bit of ways to go. I'm just going to let it go a little bit further. Alright, let's see how this looks. Ah, that's better. Um, the edges, because there's less heat, they're still fr fairly raw, but I'm going to start stirring it around now. And you can see that brown bottom. Um, yep, that's where all the flavor is. You don't want it to be black, but a nice dark deep brown is good. So I'm going to stir this around and try and get the, the, the pink tops upside down, the uncooked portions. Okay. That looks pretty good. Come on, you little stinker. There you go. Alright, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that cook again, covered for probably another couple minutes. Alright, let's see how this looks. That looks really good. Mmm, it smells really good too. So. Now that these are pretty much done, they might be a little bit pink inside, but that's okay because uh, you're going to put them back. I'm going to remove them and put them in a little um, holding vessel for now. Okay, and look what's left in the pan. Some fond and a lot of sausage grease. Um, you are not going to get rid of that <laughs> to me. Uh, fat is synonymous with flavor. Um, so I'm going to let that heat and pour the onions in and then the garlic. I have to do this one-handed, which is not very easy since I'm holding the phone with the other. There. Okay. And just stir that up a bit. And I'm going to sauté this for a little while. Um, it's still on that low heat. Um, but the nice thing about the Dutch oven is that it collects heat and, and retains it. It doesn't quickly lose it. Lose it. So, um, yeah. So just stir these onions around with the garlic and let it sauté for a couple minutes. Maybe a few minutes. Ah, oh, this is going to be so good. So I'm actually going to do this uncovered. Um, because I want some of the water that's in here that's going to be released from the onions to evaporate um, because um, I don't want these onions to absolutely steam. I want them to fry a little bit and if there's too much water it's just going to steam or boil and I think when you fry the onions it brings out a little bit more of their flavor. Alright, it's been a couple minutes and these onions are just starting to get to that translucent um, stage. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in the mushrooms. So these are the chopped, the roughly chopped uh, shiitake mushrooms. And uh, here are the baby bellas. Again, I love mushrooms. That's why they're going, <laughs> so much are going in here. Um, and uh, yeah, just, mushrooms just add so much flavor to the dish. I love them. So I'm going to stir this around. Uh, the mushrooms are going to both release a lot of liquid, but also absorb a lot of the oil. So as you can see at the very bottom, it's not, almost dry now. Um, so um, I'm going to actually let that, uh, well, I'm going to add a little bit of oil um, just to so the mushroom doesn't burn at the bottom. There. Um, and 
I'd like the mushrooms to fry a little bit. Because again, when you fry them, I think it develops more flavor than if it was just um, boiled or burnt. <laughs> so I'm gonna let that, uh, I'm gonna stir this around and let it cook for a little bit. I'm actually gonna close the top, the, the pan, and uh, let it simmer for just a minute or so. Okay, it's been actually about two minutes. Let's see where we are. This is looking pretty good. I kind of want the mushrooms to cook down a little bit further. You know how mushrooms shrink a lot when they cook. Um, I think I'm going to let this cook down a little bit further. Right. It's been a few more minutes. Ooh, look at all that liquid released from the mushrooms. So this liquid actually you could use to deglaze the pan. What I'm doing is just I'm scraping some of that fond off from the bottom. Um, Cause there's a lot of flavor in that. Got a little bits up. Okay, and up until this point I haven't added any salt. Um, so I'm just gonna try a little mushroom and see how that tastes. A little hot. Um, it's not bad. I think it could use a little bit of salt. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And try not to destroy my kitchen at the same time. Yep. There you go. Okay. Now that's turning into a slight little mush, which is just fine. Um, I'm going to add a can of diced tomatoes. Splorp. Alright, there you go. Stir that around. And I'm going to let that simmer for another few minutes. It's doing for a bit and this lid is getting really hot so I'm using a oven knit. And look at all that yummy goodness. It has started to char at the bottom again, so I'm just going to scrape the bottom, make sure it doesn't get burnt. Can't really see the bottom anymore, but I can feel it. And the tomato is probably going to add a bit of sourness to it, so I'm going to add a little bit more salt, because I'm pretty sure it's going to need it. So, there you go. Some more salt. And then, oh! I'm going to add some heat. In the form of cayenne pepper. Ta-da! So, again, I'm just, I'm just eyeing this. I don't really have a set amount. That's probably quite a bit for me. <laughs> and just let that stir and bubble away. And lastly, I'm going to add the remaining of the baby greens I had last week um, for my previous dish. Um, just gonna pop them in there. They're going to probably reduce down to the size of a thimble. <laughs> um, but I don't want it to go to waste, so it's gonna go in there and add some nice greenery. Well, by the time that this is done, it'll be like brownery. Um, there you go. I'm going to let that reduce a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. That, oh, that smells quite a lot like um, greenery. <laughs> so, ow, that hurt. Um, okay. Now that this is all mixed, the last thing we need is the pasta, and I actually tend to like to cook the pasta, put the pasta uncooked in the sauce. Um, there's not much sauce here, so if I put the pasta in uncooked now, it's just going to basically be dry as a bone. So I'm going to add some chicken broth. Quite a bit of chicken broth. I don't know how much I'm adding. I'm just adding enough that I think will be good for the 
uncooked pasta that I'm putting in. Um, I'm going to see how that goes. Mm, maybe a little bit more. You know, I'm just going to use the rest of it. There we go. <laughs> Squirt. All right. So I'm going to let that come to a boil before putting the... Um, now it's like a soup. Um, before I put the uncooked pasta in. So I'm going to cover it up and let it come to a boil. All right, it's been a few minutes. It's starting to boil. Uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to try a little bit of this and see how it tastes. It might taste like sourness, <laughs> uh, but we'll see. Um, it's actually not bad. Um, I think it could use a little bit more salt, but uh, if you remember, I still have those meatballs that are cooked, so I'm going to add that later uh, when the pasta is cooked, so that might add the saltiness I need. All right, so this is boiling. I'm going to slowly add in the pasta. Now there is a slim chance that I do not have enough liquid in here to be absorbed by all the pasta because this pasta is going to absorb a lot. If that happens, not a big deal. Just add a little bit more water and um, you'll know because um, there'll be almost no water and the pasta will be like even more than al dente. It'll be hard. Uh, but I want to conserve the, because I want to conserve the amount of liquid in here, I'm going to cover this and just turn it to low. You can see my nasty oven. Um, turn it to low so it doesn't boil over and that should be good. There you go. So I'm going to let that cook for about Mm. Al dente is usually about eight minutes. I'm gonna check it at six minutes and see if I need to add some more water. Okay, not so bad. All right. So the liquid's definitely reduced quite a bit. Oh, and it's starting to get charred at the bottom, so I'm gonna break it up at the bottom because I don't want it to burn. I'm also gonna turn the heat down even lower. There we go. Ugh. Every cooking experience for me is a new experience. So next time I will make sure I have more liquid and make sure it doesn't get stuck to the bottom like this kind of is. Oh, it's actually almost clear. That's good. Oh, and I turned it off without knowing. There you go. Turn back on to very low. Looks really good though. Um, all right, I'm going to add next some heavy cream, which um, you don't have to. I just do because it just makes it so much richer and tastes a lot better. Um, so hang on a second. Okay, here we go. Hopefully this doesn't make you cringe. Um, <laughs> it just adds a really nice layer of flavor to it. I might actually add more. I know that seemed like a lot, but look, it's almost gone. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> this makes it so much better. Um, I'm just going to add the rest of it because I don't like it sitting in my fridge not doing anything. Plus, this is additional liquid to be absorbed by the pasta. So there you go. It all worked out perfectly. <laughs> all right. So I'm just going to let this get to a boil. But while, actually, a little low bubble, not necessarily a boil. Um, but since the cream was cold, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, and actually, I'm going to try a little bit of this pasta, make sure that it's still, that it's cooked through. Mmm, okay. It's cooked through. So I'm going to go ahead and add the meatballs back. 
along with the yummy juices from the meatballs. I mean, come on, look at this. It looks so good. <laughs> This is basically going to feed me for my lunches for the week and some of my coworkers as well, who I'm sure will appreciate it. Now that this has been mixed quite a bit, I'm going to try some. Um, I'm hoping that the salt from the juices from the sausage um, have flavored this a bit so that it... <laughs> I'm dropping things everywhere. Um, so that it's not too bland. I mean, I, hopefully it's not too bland. I don't think it's going to be. Let me turn this down a bit. Oh my god, that's really good. <laughs> It's actually not that salty at all. Um, uh, yeah, it's perfect. I think my dishes do tend to be too salty. Um, and uh, that's because I like salt. <laughs> um, but uh, this, I actually didn't add that much salt at all. It's just a, a little sprinkles here and there throughout. But for the most part, um, it's really, really good. It's it's not too salty. So um, I'm going to put some in a little bowl so that you can see it. And there's a big chunk of um, shiitake mushroom, but there you go. There's not much color to my video, but um, I'll, I'll take a picture of this afterwards so you can actually see it. Um, but I think I have some of this right now. There you go. Um, this is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, it just required some a little bit of time, but um, I know that cooking is probably not one of the things most people want to do when they get home from work or whatever. I actually just got back from an audition tonight. Um, I auditioned for The Tempest at Long Beach Playhouse, and I think it went pretty well. Uh, but I won't find out whether I'm called back until tomorrow night. Um, but, uh, you know, after the audition, um, I decided I needed to cook. And... Uh, you know, once you get going, and if you have music on, it's pretty relaxing. Um, and it's basically just a one-pot meal. Everything just kind of goes in, in stages, and there's no particular rhyme or reason for why one will go in before the other, as far as most of these ingredients are concerned. So you can really do whatever you want, and you can use mushrooms. You don't have to use mushrooms. You can use heavy cream, like I did, but you don't have to use heavy cream. You can just do whatever you want. Um, Whatever you think will taste good. Um, I pretty much make the same dish with slight variations every week. Um, so if you want to give me any ideas for what I can make next week, I, will, I could try doing that. Um, because otherwise, I'm just going to be making variations on the same thing. Anyway, um, there you go. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is my first edited video with the cooking involved. Um, and hopefully it'll turn out okay. Have a good night.